Hi guys, my name is Dr. Noloazim Kadra and I am one of Dr. T's ex-classmates. We went to UP together. So he's asked me to basically make this video for you guys to give you some tips and tricks and to basically discuss SIC and to discuss what helped me, you know, get through SIC. All right, guys, so I've got this stuff here on my phone and I'm going to going to be looking down a lot because I have to read from my phone but um yeah um let's get started so guys the first one is to get into a routine that works for you this is so important guys don't stick to things that are not working for you one mistake that I made in SIC is that I wanted to be the person that works um during the night so it was so appealing to me because at night it's quiet there are no distractions and you feel like you get more work done but the problem is that i would not actually wake up i would set this alarm for like 2 a.m and i would not wake up and um, i tried this over and over again and this wasted my time so i think it's so important guys to just know what works for you not what works for your friend not what works for your reg or your consultant but what works for you all right resting and eating well guys it's so important nobody is going to sit you down in sic and ask you have you rested have you um eaten well have you um how's your mental health nobody's gonna ask you that so it's up to you guys um to be responsible about your health guys focus on your physical health and your mental health as well it's important to take breaks it's important to see your family to speak to your family i know with COVID, it's been a little difficult but guys do other things um even when you're studying and you're working hard when you need a break you need a break you know i think it's important because you don't want to get um burnt out during this 18 month experience and not being able to continue or to work optimally as a result okay the next one is to set realistic goals guys setting realistic goals is going to keep you motivated you don't want to demotivate yourself by setting um, unrealistic or insane goals like oh i want to read the whole of Kali. what is it i almost called it Kali and o'connor <laughs> telly and o'connor you don't want to tell yourself you're going to read the entire telly and o'connor in you know a single week because at the end of the week you're going to be disappointed and demotivated and stressed out you know set realistic goals break your work down into reasonable chunks of of work and then study that stuff and reward yourself and you're going to be feeling so much better and more motivated about um, the amount of work that you have to do all right the next one is to understand that sic is like training to become an intern so use it use the time that you have in the hospital to practice your drips to practice bloods um to practice clocking your patient because you're gonna be an intern at the end of this um experience right and you want to make the best doctor and you also don't want to make your jump from being a student to internship harder than it has to be so practice guys practice your skills it's not that bad yes it all is about you know academics and doing the best that you can academically but it's also about um actually grasping these concepts and being able to apply them for internship so speak to your interns you know help your interns out um don't get abused though yeah don't get um used and abused and taken advantage of but also um yeah use use that time to to actually gain clinical skills it's going to make it so much easier for you in internship all right guys now i'm going to get into some study techniques and um, basically things that i did when i was studying so the first thing is know what you're good at and what you're not good at guys so for example in obs and gynae whenever i did this rotation i knew i'm not good at obs but i'm good at gynae so i used to start with gynae start with what you're good at get that stuff out of the way guarantee those marks guys you know you want to know that i'm guaranteed the gynae marks right because i'm good at the gynae so you start studying the stuff that you're good at you do it in the most efficient way possible and then you go to the stuff that you're not good at so i would always end off with obs and the last thing i used to study was the ctg because i knew i'm gonna waste time if i start off with the ctg guys and then you're gonna stress and you're not gonna be done with the ctg that you're not good at okay i wasn't that i wasn't good at and then in the end you still haven't done gynae and then you lose all those marks that you could have gotten so guys start with what you're good at study it in the most efficient way as as you can and then save all the time um for the stuff that you're not good at yeah so you want to um ensure that you've done all the things that you're good at because 
then you know that you're guaranteed those marks and you know that you're going to remember that stuff and then you can um, focus on the more time consuming things because we all know what we're good at and we all know what we're not good at so focus on your strengths and then you're going to build on to your weaknesses after you know that you've secured everything that you can with those strengths um all right the next one is do not study paragraphs break the information down into headings and points guys you need to have an approach um i used to always be told to have an approach by the registrars and i did not understand this at all and then when i did sic i started to understand it because um guys you can't just study paragraphs and 10 pages of just paragraphs and paragraphs there's no way that you're going to remember all that information so you want to break it down into topics so what i used to do how i used to um study this stuff is for example if it's diabetes i would um break it down into the definition the causes the investigation and then the management and then it's so much easier because you know that under those different topics um you're gonna have like um five to six pointers and then you just remember the topics and um the, the points that you have to study so i think it's very important to break your work down um into those um um I, what can i say digestible um basically chunks of information as opposed to just going straight for studying 20 pages of diabetes and then not remembering remembering half of it at the end of that study session all right the next one is remember what you didn't call and why you did it guys for me um when i did my obs and gynae um rotation i realized how important it is to be present during the call don't just show up to your call not ask questions not know what's going on remember why you were there and what you guys did okay so most of the time if this patient came in and they told you that oh this is a 34 year old female and she's had a one day history of low abdominal pain and pv bleeding and then if she was stable your intern is probably going to say oh yeah like please clock this patient and then you clock the patient and you probably examined her and then you felt the ass and it was open so you guys waited for your reg your reg came um he saw um products that were still remaining and then he told your intern to do the mva so if you remember all those events you basically know how to treat an incomplete miscarriage you know how to take the history for it because you did it you know the examination you felt that the os was open you know that um what it looked like on the ultrasound there were products that were remaining there were retained products and then you saw the mva being done so basically guys you would know the entire process and i'm telling you guys they would ask it that way um during the clinical they would then give you the history and say there's a 34 year old female this were this was her vitals um she had a history of low abdominal pain and um she she had pv bleeding um how would you manage it and then you basically just rattle off what you did on call because that was the correct thing so guys make use of your calls don't just go on a call go on a call and just try your best to grasp the concepts and to grasp the entire procedure because it's going to make managing your patients so much easier in internship and also um, for your exams because um, that's the way that they're going to ask it. It's all about, you know, the clinical um, side of it all. So you can go into your details and, you know, study everything about an incomplete miscarriage. But if you don't know what your patient looks like, um, how the examination goes, how to treat it, you know, properly, and basically how to diagnose it just based on um, a little um, bit of the, the history that they're going to give you during your exam, then it's not going to work out for you. All right, the next one is to make diagrams, draw pictures, and use different colors. Guys, this is so important. Like colors, for me, colors um, used to trigger my memory. For example, during anesthetics, um, you had the different, you know, IV induction drugs. I would put propofol on a pink page, atomidate on a blue page, ketamine on like a green page. And then I would be able to remember that, oh yeah, propofol was on the pink page. And then I would, you know, think back what was, uh, think back to what was on, you know, that pink page. So this really helped to trigger my memory. Draw pictures. Guys, it's so important to draw the pictures. Like, for example, the Cushing syndrome person like I still remember because I used to draw this person when I was studying that Cushing syndrome and I would draw like the the what the the, the face you know the, the the face the 
moon faces i think they call it moon face guys i hope i'm right <laughs> otherwise this is gonna be so embarrassing and then the pendulous abdomen the abdominal stria like i would draw all of that stuff guys and then in the test like you just remember it because you drew it now you know like how cushing's um affects the body just because you drew it and then also making diagrams guys the stick figure person is such a good trick you just draw a stick figure you draw a head you draw a neck the person has these little limbs and then you go from top to bottom it can be for example side effects it can be um a, a certain um disease or a condition for example hypothyroidism i used to draw the stick person and then you start from top to bottom how does it affect maybe the brain i used to think oh they might get insomnia they might get anxiety they might um um yeah and then the eyes then i would go down to the eyes the eyes would be like bigger and then i would go down to the what is this thingy the the heart and i would think oh yeah you know um they can get heart palpitations a tachycardia and then i would then draw a little like armpits they're sweating they're sweating a lot and then you just like guys you go down like you start from the top to the bottom top to the bottom and then you just basically just draw these things and it's going to help you remember guys um it's a really nice approach to use and then the last no it's not the last one sorry make your own summary from the beginning it's easier to remember than someone else's summary yes make your own summaries draw your own pictures remember what you want to remember obviously it needs to be part of the 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 framework of this um condition but you guys need to be able to structure it for yourselves and to have your own approach all right and then get a whiteboard make posters guys this is so important and this is so helpful get a whiteboard or make posters if you can't get a whiteboard and stick things up on your wall this is gonna help you remember because you're subconsciously basically absorbing this information every single time you're in your room so every time you look up even if you're like um getting dressed for um um rotations or you're you're about to go to bed or you're brushing your teeth and you look up and you see the side effects of um for example propofol then you're gonna remember it by the time it it comes to the test so guys you want to trigger your memory you want to help yourself remember as much as possible um next up is to ask questions and to investigate why why you're doing certain things so if your intern says please do bloods or put up a drip for this patient ask be inquisitive um this is also relating back to why you're doing certain things on the call don't just do things to do things but um ask these questions guys because it's so important to know why you're doing these bloods if they tell you it's an fbc and u and e you ask them why why do you guys want an fbc and u and e and then they will explain it to you and then you're gonna know more information and then yeah it's 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 helpful to ask these questions because it's just gonna help you with your um exam at the end um lastly is to read up on the topics they ask you to guys there's a reason why they will ask you to read up on these topics and the reason is because these topics will be in the test there are certain topics that you know will be in the test and those are the topics that they will by the first week they're going to tell you in surgery for example they will tell you they will ask you about peptic ulcers because they will ask you you know like um how to manage a ruptured peptic ulcer like there's those things that go without saying those things will be in the exam they will be in the test so you need to know them so um focus on those things guys make sure that you've studied all these things take down notes if the consultant starts rattling off on a topic during the um the ward round it's because they are most likely going to put that topic into the test and they want you to know so guys um they do drop hints during your rotation so actually go to the rotation go there and be present and don't just be in a rush or um you know be impatient you want to to study but you also want to actually learn and make the most out of the experience guys so yeah um ask questions be inquisitive and things will go well for you so yeah guys i hope this has helped um i'm wishing everyone the best for their sic journey Good luck with everything. And if you have any questions, um, you can reach out to Dr. T and he will reach out to me and I will answer them um, to as much 
what can I say <laughs> with as much enthusiasm as I can. All right, guys, thank you for watching. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe because Dr. T's channel is going to be so helpful for your SIC journey. All right, guys. Bye.